If you want to understand about S4 HANA Business Partner, then you need to stop thinking in terms of customers and vendors, but you better be continually thinking about customers and vendors. And if you know about customers and vendors in ECC 6.0, this requires a dramatic shift in thinking. I have to confess, even experts need an occasional reminder of exactly how Business Partner is astonishingly complex, massively duplicative simplification, all at once. Users in the enterprise benefit from simplification, but you and I, responsible to implement Business Partner, have to wrestle with the complexity and understanding duplicative data. I can tell you this much with certainty, continuing to think in terms of customers and vendors is a path to misery. Let's review the objects we've been working with for years in ECC 6.0. We begin here for context because even plain old vendor master stores duplicate data. For example, a vendor master includes one and only one record in business address services. And that's where you'd look for street address and communications details, such as multiple telephone numbers and multiple email addresses. The vendor street address and some other address related data elements are also recorded in the vendor master general data, table LFA1. But we know it'd be a classic mistake to look there for street address or any address data whatsoever. No. All the address-related data elements are understood to be in business address services tables, table ADRC, and so on. Now let's add contact persons to the picture. A vendor master can have unlimited number of contact persons, and each contact person can have communications records, such as multiple telephone numbers and multiple email addresses. Mind you, these communication records are separate from those of the vendor master. They belong to the contact person, and they're maintained independently. Lastly, each contact person can have multiple business address services records. For example, a business address, a home address. And each of those business address services records, almost comically, can have communications records, such as multiple telephone numbers and multiple email addresses. And now, mind you, the multiple telephone numbers and email addresses belong to the address record of the contact person, but they're completely separate from the multiple addresses and email addresses associated with the contact person. Does that sound pretty confusing? So now let's say it's your job to write a functional specification document, and you need to explain to a developer a requirement to get the email address of the contact person. Where is it, can you say? Well, your guess is as good as mine, because the range of possibilities is such that only a master data design and strict data governance can provide a predictable answer to the question. Now, let's double the size of this hairball. Everything that we've just seen all of these objects for Vendor Master is also true for Customer Master. It's the same creation of a single business address services record for the customer. It's the same ability to create an unlimited number of contact persons. And it's the same story about business address records for each contact person. Think about what that means for master data maintenance when a single legal entity acts as both a customer and a vendor across business processes. For example, a vendor is a supplier of goods or services, but the same legal entity might also act as a customer for purposes such as billing of rebates or discounts. To support this scenario, both a customer master and a vendor master are created for the same legal entity, and the master data records are linked. But there's still two completely independent sets of master data. That includes independently maintained addresses, tax numbers, bank details, and a whole lot more. It's obvious that the master data is maintained independently and redundantly. But based on experience, the master data is very likely also maintained inconsistently, no matter how much effort's been applied towards data governance. Now let's have a look at S4HANA Business Partner. To begin with, multiple addresses are possible for a business partner, each with a defined usage. What's more, each address includes validity dates. So if a supplier will be changing its street address two months from now, then you can maintain that master data today with validity dates. Of course, each address is a separate record in business address services, and each business address services record includes its own communications records, such as multiple telephone numbers and email addresses. A business partner represents a legal entity that can be extended to multiple roles. For example, if the business partner will act as a customer in a business process, then it's extended to a customer role. If the business partner will act as a supplier in a business process, then it's extended to a supplier role. Finally, a business partner can participate in multiple relationships with an unlimited number of other business partners. 
For example, as a contact person. To do that, you create a business partner as a person and then in a separate step associate it with the first business partner in a contact person relationship. Because the business partner created to represent a contact person is after all the business partner, it too includes the possibility for multiple addresses and communications details all with validity dates. What we see here is that compared with plain old customer and vendor masters, business partner offers a much more coherent set of master data for representing a legal entity across all business processes. And business partner brings the flexibility of validity dates for many objects. The data model and functionality of a business partner is significantly more robust and master data maintenance is simplified. There's a lot to like. But there's a small wrinkle of complexity brewing at this point in the story. It's no small thing that Materials Management, MM, and Sales and Distribution, SD, are unaware of business partner and continue to use plain old customer and vendor masters. Consequently, you think in terms of business partner, what is seen, to produce a desired result that's ultimately still grounded in plain old customers and plain old vendor masters, and these are largely unseen. So because SD continues to use plain old customer masters, when a business partner is extended to a customer role, then a plain old customer master is created in the background. And that customer master has to be created in full, meaning with its own business address services record, its own contact persons, and separate business address services records for each contact person that has a business address. A user sees and maintains the data for the business partner, and the system, through customer vendor integration, creates and maintains data for the plain old customer master in the background and all of its dependent objects. Because MM continues to use plain old vendor masters, when a business partner is extended to a supplier role, then a plain old vendor master is created in the background. And that vendor master is also created in full, meaning with its own business address services record, its own contact persons, and separate business address services records for each contact person that has a business address. Let's focus on the case of a business partner, one legal entity, that acts both as a customer and a supplier. Because the business partner is extended to both customer and supplier roles, both plain old customer and vendor master data objects are created, together with all their dependent objects. But it's not as if data can simply be transferred from business partner to customer and vendor. The data models and the functionality are different between these master data objects. For example, notice the tax numbers, industry, bank details with validity dates, and identification numbers with validity dates are part of the business partner object model, and multiple of each can be maintained. Notice too the contact persons are part of the business partner object model. So this raises a lot of questions with respect to which objects are transferred from business partner to customer and vendor. Because these objects and data elements belong to, and can only be maintained for, the business partner, the questions are answered by a mix of permitting no differentiation by role, primary indicators, and mapping. In summary, a user sees and only has the possibility to maintain data for business partner, which has the data model and capabilities of business partner. But SD, MM, and many more business processes are only capable of consuming the master data of plain old customer and vendor, which have the data model and capabilities of plain old customer and vendor. And that master data is only indirectly maintained by users. The system, via customer vendor integration, creates and maintains the plain old customer and vendor masters. Permitting no differentiation by role means that when a business partner is extended to both customer and supplier roles, then data from the business partner is copied to both the customer and the vendor master where it will be used by business processes. No difference between the customer and vendor is permitted. For example, a business partner has one set of banking details maintained as basic data no matter whether it's acting as a customer, a supplier, or both. Customer vendor integration will transfer the banking details of the business partner, one set of banking details, to both the customer and the vendor master. For one business partner, it's not possible to maintain banking details separately for customer and vendor. An example of using a primary indicator is industry key. Industry key is used in standard screens for selecting data for evaluations. For example, a list of vendor masters. This data element belongs to the general data area of customer and vendor. 
which means that one and only one industry key is possible for the customer master and only one industry key is possible for the vendor master. But Business Partner offers the ability to maintain multiple values for industry key. Notice that one value must be indicated as the so-called standard industry. Checking this indicator marks which single value will be transferred from the business partner basic data to the customer master basic data. The concept of no differentiation by role is consistently applied here too. If the business partner is extended to both customer and supplier roles, then the one value for industry key is copied from business partner to both customer master and the vendor master. It's not possible to maintain industry key separately for customer and vendor. Lastly, some data elements are mapped from business partner to customer and vendor. Tax numbers are an example of this approach. Many tax numbers can be maintained as general data for a business partner, but specific tax number categories are mapped to specific customer and vendor master fields. The category of U.S. Federal Employer ID number, for example, is mapped to field tax number two. When a value is maintained for a U.S. Federal Employer ID number, the single value will be transferred from the business partner basic data to the customer master general data. The concept of no differentiation by role is consistently applied here too. If the business partner is extended to both a customer and a, and a supplier role, then the one value for U.S. Federal Employer ID number is copied from the business partner to both the customer and the vendor master. It's not possible to maintain tax number two separately for customer and vendor. By now, it should be clear why it's essential to think in terms of business partners in master data design, master data processes, data governance, really across the board. In S4 HANA, you can't directly maintain significant parts of customer and vendor masters, but those master data objects, not the master data objects of business partner per se, are consumed by ERP business processes. Yes, it's true that customer vendor integration handles the technical work and manages the complexity in the background. But in the end, that's a rather small part of the story. Your master data design drives the result in every business process, and it must be informed by an intimate understanding of how business partner objects are transferred to customer and vendor.